What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm just over here at the house. Fix and work on the race car. We've had a problem with the car. We went out to the track Thunder Valley, had an issue. It was showing real rich. Thought we had an injector stuck, found a wire off. It acted right, didn't have any issues. Went to Rico the next race, had no issues at all. The car seemed to work okay, it was fine. And then we went to Harold's and the thing wouldn't spool up. And so you can see at the beginning of this video, we had an issue and it would not spool. It would just sit there and blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna show you all the data log. I looked over everything. I think we found a problem. I think we have a bad oxygen sensor. And I looked over the data at the track uh, both times, but when you're racing, it's race day. You got a lot to do, turning around the car, getting everything ready to go. Sometimes you miss things. And so I just assumed, I looked at the data. It said it was rich. I said, these sensors are 100% correct. It's rich. But when you look back at the video, especially the last one at Harold's, it was showing the air fuel ratio was like 2.4, and then it would even go down to 1.5. And uh, I've got it set so it can only pull 5% of fuel. I don't give Holly a ton of leeway so because I don't want it to, you know, overcorrect. And so I think that may have been what was happening, even at 5%. Uh, at uh, air fuel ratio 2.5 to 1, it should have been blubbering fuel. I mean, I talk about it all the time. You know these injectors get stuck and when you see any car with an injector get stuck it is like a, a, a methanol fountain and so it's just one of those things i didn't have that so i think we have a bad oxygen sensor let me show you this data real fast and we'll look at it and we're going to go put the new oxygen sensor in the car don't forget to go to turbojohnracing.com grab yourself some merchandise the new shirts will be here tomorrow so we're going to start sending those things out comment like and subscribe thanks guys my goal is to never be a first round duck, just make it through first round. But when I do lose first round, this is the shirt I'm gonna be sporting at the starting line for second round. Get your limited edition first round duck shirt at turbojohnracing.com now before they run out. All right guys, so here is the data log from the no spool when we were sitting up there at the line. It just would not spool up. And so if you look at it, TPS is up here on the top. This is ignition timing. The red is RPM. The green down here is actual air fuel ratio. Then we got other, a lot of other stuff down there. That's the dome pressure and target and all that. So we're gonna just get kind of all this stuff out of the way. And these are the two that's important. Target air fuel ratio up here, 4.2 is, is what it was at. So this is what was happening here. So come up wide open throttle. And the, the first thing that should have been a sign for me is how flat this air fuel ratio is. And I mean, it is perfectly flat. And I saw it and I noticed it and I saw what it was, 2.4 air fuel ratio, and then a couple spikes down below. And I was like, okay, well maybe, maybe this uh, thing has got a stuck injector or we got another issue. But what it was doing, so it come up and it come up clean on the RPM and it made it up to right there on this first one made it to 3,300 RPM. And you see it was pulling out 5% of fuel. I don't allow it to pull out but 5% when it's down low because I, you know, 5% shouldn't be a ton, but it was pulling out 5% of fuel. So you see the, the pounds per hour there is 119. And then it just comes down and then, you know, I feel it come off the uh, converter. It should be going up and it comes down to 1,800 RPM. And I'm like, okay. And then I let off completely. And of course, the air fuel, it goes down to 1.8, comes back up, and goes 2.4, stays there again. And you see, it just, it's just not, it just doesn't work out there. And you can see this time over here, this was very interesting because you can see coming up here, I'm still wide open throttle and it does it a couple times and it just wouldn't go. And I'm like, what in the world? Still reading 2.4 air fuel ratio. So it looks like it is fat. There's no fuel coming out the exhaust. So with no fuel coming out of the exhaust, you know, I think what was happening is it comes down, it's pulling too much fuel out, losing RPM. That's what I'm hoping anyway. And so it does it and then comes back up and then goes back down and comes back up. And then, you know, so that's a, 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 a seesaw. And then of course it just shows there again. It's just, it's like the oxygen sensor just was not working. I, that's what I think is happening. That's what I'm hoping is happening is we got an oxygen sensor issue and that just doesn't look normal to me. Um, and especially after thinking about it and looking back at the video, there's no fuel just at 2.4 air fuel ratio. And even like that right there is at 1.1 air fuel ratio at that point, you know, that thing should have been just 
I just should have just been blubbering fuel up the exhaust and it was not. All right, guys, well, here we go. Oxygen sensor placement on this thing is, you know, pretty good. It's on the top side of the, the pipe here. So any of the moisture coming out, it's gonna hit it, but it's not gonna be sitting in it. The problem is with this up pipe, y'all see it all the time. When I crank this thing up initially, uh, it produces a lot of condensation. And so that condensation, it, it pulls, right? So normally like if this was going downhill, E85 cars do it all the time, methanol cars do it all the time. When they cold start, they have a lot of condensation coming out of the exhaust. And so it's, you know, it's a decent amount, but it doesn't look terrible. But the problem is, so as this one runs, the condensation can't really drip out. So it just puddles up down here in the turbine housing and in the pipe. And what will end up happening when I actually start revving it for the first time, what it'll do is it'll shoot a bunch. And I think it's pretty cool looking, honestly, but it'll shoot a bunch of condensation. And it probably does have a little bit of methanol in it, but it's mostly water. And it shoots it out the pipe and it does like a waterfall type effect. And it's not super big, but it's enough to where I have to rev it a few times to get it out. So now we got this blazing hot oxygen sensor there getting covered with moisture. And so I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's a, how long that sensor is going to live in that environment. This sensor is a couple years old now. The pipe used to go out the, the side over there. And so it would produce condensation, but it didn't have the same amount that it has now. I may turn this thing at some point and just face it straight down. Uh, or I might need to put a drain or something on the pipe to make it so that it works better. So what I'm going to do now is I've got my new sensor over here. Uh, this is the Holly NTK sensor. And this thing is going up. It was like $315 to get it shipped to me. And you can't run a Bosch with methanol. So you have to do the NTK. And so that's what it is. And so what we'll do is I'm going to first hook my, my laptop up. I'm going to get it. Um, see if this thing will go ahead and read super rich now and then uh, we'll see if we can uh, replace it and maybe that's the problem I hope that's the problem it's just a as simple as replacing the the sensor on it and I don't know I mean probably we need to have a sensor in the in the trailer as a spare it's hooked up to the ECU my screen is jacked up up here gotta get a new one here so right here at this point the the O2 sensor appears to be reading okay. So let's, uh, I'm gonna crank it up and see what it does when it's uh, running. <laughs> like the oxygen sensor is working fine now so i was hoping what was going to happen is i was going to come in here i was going to crank it up and it was just going to read 2.4 2.2 air fuel ratio there'd be no fuel flooding out i changed the sensor and it would be working but uh as it is that is not the case so that's usually what happens is intermittent problems are super hard to find and figure out so we may not have an oxygen sensor issue at all we may have a motor problem we may have a coil problem. We may have an injector hanging open problem. But the thing with these precision injectors is, I mean, they're five feet these, but they just don't have a very small orifice in there. And it just it's just the way they're designed. The way they're designed, there's a big hole in there. If it was stuck open, it would have a lot of fuel coming out and it would give it a definitely an, a very rich air fuel ratio, but it would also be, I think, uh, blubbering fuel out the exhaust when it's there and that's not what it done so let's change this sensor real fast and then we're going to crank it up and see if we see a difference luckily this thing's real easy it won't take but a minute all right guys well here you go well we got this sensor out and you see it's identical to that one except for all the rust uh, i assume 
that rusty right there is the way it was facing. But it's also got quite a bit of rust there. Uh, I don't know if it'll wipe off yet. I have not tried it. Uh, it'll come off. Some of it will. Now maybe I'll let this thing cool down. And it is blazing hot. It is burning my fingers like crazy. But maybe I'll let it cool down a little bit. And uh, we'll see if we can maybe clean it with some, some brake parts clean and we'll maybe save it for a spare. Um, you know, cause it, right then it was just working. I mean, I don't see any like problems with the wiring. There's no issues um, with exposed wires that I can tell. No pins are, are out. So I mean, you know, the, the wiring and stuff looks fine. Okay, let's put this new one in. And uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Some people say that you should probably replace these every year. Maybe we should. Here's the oxygen sensor sticking down in that pipe. But something that is interesting is this thing is buzzing. I've never noticed them like buzz before. But I can hear it actually buzzing. And so I just took my old one, plugged it up, and it is not making any noise at all. So I don't know if the, if the buzzing is supposed to be there. Or it's not supposed to be there, but that is interesting. That is something that I've never heard. Maybe that's the little pump on the inside of the oxygen sensor, because I think there's a pump that moves it across or something. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it or not, but it is buzzing. We're plugged up. This one is now reading 12.7. The other one was not reading quite that high. So let's crank it up. the other one was so we'll see i don't know if it's oxygen sensor issue or not so we'll see this weekend we're going to be going there's two races happening this weekend thunder valley uh top of the track friday night and that's a little closer to home friday nights are hard but uh the car is not currently set up for that either so i got to work on that a little bit to get that sorted out if we go there clifton claude has got a race happening at pageland dragway on Saturday, but that is a very long ways away. And so I know we'll be getting home super, super late if we go do that. So we just gotta decide what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna go Friday night for sure. And we're gonna hit up Thunder Valley. And Saturday, it kinda depends on how it goes Friday night. So, all right guys, comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to go to turbojohnracing.com. Grab yourself some merchandise, get some t-shirts. First round done. I appreciate it guys, y'all take care. Comment, like, and subscribe, later.